Hello Jackal, in today's video I'll show you how to make this laser kind of effect in DaVinci Resolve, so we'll have a laser beam pointing and shooting to a spot, this spot will be moving and following a path and revealing the path that we'll make along the way. This can be any kind of path and you could also have multiple paths and multiple polygons. Now if you can imagine this laser beam is cutting out the shape out of steel and what am I missing? I'm missing some particles, so that is what I'll also add in this video. Now let's get digital. So this was the slow down version and if it's a fast one it can look something like this. You'll want to open the media pool, right click, make a new fusion composition, make it, put this onto a timeline and you can extend it, maybe we want this animation to be 20 seconds long. So we can right click, change clip duration and type in 20. Then we'll select this and go into the fusion page. Now we'll be making polygons, so make sure that you go to the beginning. This will be done in DaVinci Resolve 18.6. If you use DaVinci Resolve 19, you will have access to multi-polygon node. So I'll just be using the polygon node. So use a polygon node. You can make any kind of shape and you can also come back to this shape to make changes later on. This can be any shape. It can be a simple one or you can also kind of make a text as I've done. We'll just have to make heads and tails how you actually want to display the text. So in this case, I've done it something like so. So this polygon will just be the shape that we'll be making or displaying. I'll now want to right click the shape animation. I don't want this. And this also will not be a solid, but it will have some border because this is what we'll be displaying at the end when we do the reveal. And we can also add some soft edge to this. So maybe if I just do the reveal, how this will look like at the end, we will be using a fast noise node. I'll display it on the right. I'll want to increase the detail, the scale. If you want to have some movement, you can maybe adjust the seed rate. And you can also adjust the contrast and the brightness. We'll want to go to the color and change the color of this. Maybe something like this. We'll see how this will look like. So now we'll simply connect the polygon to the fast noise node. And this is what we'll have after the animation finishes. And as you can see, we also have some animation being done with the seed rate. So if this is too fast, we'll go to the fast noise node and adjust the seed rate. In this case, maybe I'll go with blue and magenta-ish color. Maybe I'll do something like that. And to make this stand out a little bit, shift space, and we can maybe add some soft glow and also some glow. So this can be the final result. Now the second thing that I want is an ellipse. This will be a pointer. So I'll simply use an ellipse, make it small. This will be a solid and we can also add some soft edge to it. So this will be tiny, as you can see. We can add the background node to change the color of it so it's not black. And it will have a color something like this. So you can go to the background grab the eyedropper tool and then we can simply copy and paste the soft glow and the glow nodes connect it it looks something like this looks awesome so i'll simply leave it as is now the final step that i'll do is i'll add the transfer node and animate it by simply changing the size up and down a little bit I wouldn't need to use the transfer node, I could do this in the ellipse, 
by simply animating the width and the height. But I can do this separately so that I can always come back to the leaves and simply adjust the size if I find the animation to be not good enough. So let's see, the starting point may be 0.7-ish. Go forward a bit, increase it to maybe 1. And I'll go back to the beginning, copy this value, go to this spot, paste the value in. And now I have to make it so this animation repeats because it stops at this point. So I'll go to the spline, enable the show only select the tool option. Otherwise you'll see all of the nodes if this is disabled. And this also makes it when you select a node, you only see the node that is selected and select the option that we've animated, in this case the size, click zoom to fit, you can select all of the nodes, click on set relative, this will make the animation continuous and we can simply press S to smooth out the animation. So this is how the animation now looks like. If we don't like it, so let's connect it. So we have the whole picture, how this looks like. So this is how the ellipse looks like. If it has to be bigger, we can simply go to the ellipse and increase the size. And this will keep the animation as it was we've just changed the initial size of the ellipse. So now we have the ellipse, we have the polygon, which we won't be using for anything else other than the mask, but first we'll have to hide it. So in the polygon, we'll go to length and simply decrease it to zero and we have a dot visible as you can see. So to hide the dot, Simply change the border style to this one, flat, so it disappears. And once we'll animate the length, we'll have everything visible again. Now I will animate this simply going to frame zero, keyframe the length and go all the way to the end and keyframe this to one. So now this will slowly animate over time throughout the whole duration of the clip. But the animation will be as long as I have made the clip. Now what I need to do is position this point to the line. How we'll do that is in the polygon. How we'll do that is to right click here for a shape animation and we'll do publish. We now have this path available to connect to other elements. In this case, we'll use the transfer node and we'll connect it to the center. So right click, click on path, go to the modifier tab, right click here for shape animation, and we'll connect it to the path that we published, which is the polygon one polyline value. So now if we see how this looks like, we do have the start, but it's not moving. So let's pause this, go to path, and we'll have to animate the displays. So go to the beginning, unkeyframe it and keyframe it again, go to the end and position the displays to the end. Now we'll have to follow the path and see how it looks like. As you saw right at the beginning, this is moving too fast. And the easiest way to do that is to simply go to the polygon and animate the length. So every so often, go to the joints and simply adjust the length because it happens that when we have points, the animation kind of slows and speeds up again. So that is where we have to make the adjustments. So this should be done. Let's see how it looks like. Looks okay. We'll maybe have to purge the cache every now and then. 
just so DaVinci Resolve doesn't crash. If you want a smooth playback, you can go to playback, timeline proxy resolution, and set this to half or a quarter. The image won't be as nice looking, but this should make it easier on the system. So that looks good. Now let's see what am I missing next. Maybe the laser pointer. So for this, what I can do is simply take a transfer node. This will be the starting location of the pointer, which we won't see. So maybe I can position it outside and I'll have to connect this point to the ellipse. How I'll do that is with a polygon. So let me add the polygon node. Now with this polygon, you just have to make, well, two points. Two points is enough. Select both points, shift A, right click, polygon, two in this case, polyline, go to publish and use publish points. You should see all of the points that you made, two points in this case, you will right click on point zero and connect it to in this case, we have path one position. So this is the position, as you can see, of the ellipse. And to connect it to the transfer node, this one, we'll simply go to the center, right click, and use publish. And we can now use this center position of the transfer node, and we can connect this point one, to the transform to center. So we have now connected these two points. The only thing that we have to do is uncheck the solid, increase the border width. I'll display this on the left. So as you can see, I am now making a line. And if I want something similar to this, I can select all of these nodes, copy them, paste them, connect the polygon to the background node. Now in the background node, what I can do is change the type from solid to a gradient. And maybe I want to go from this bluish color, which will be this one. So bluish color, and this will be this magenta-ish, pinkish. So this is how the laser looks like. If I now combine this, and I will combine it here, like so. Something looks a bit off. Now what could that be? So I don't need this transfer node. This transfer node goes away. I don't need it. And now we have the laser pointer that is shooting at this point and we are revealing the path that we're making. Now, if you want to make some changes to the polygon shape, you can simply move the points. I want to move this point over the line like that. What I could also do is simply make some adjustments. Now, if you make any adjustments and you've already made the changes with the animation so that the line is actually where the ellipse is, then you'll also have to make some changes. Now, in this case, I've just positioned the points and made a new one. You can simply click on a line and add as many points as you want. And with the point selected, you can simply press backspace to delete a point. And the animation, as you can see, stays. But as I said, if you make any changes to the animation or to the points, you will have to change it again. So in this case, I would have to animate the line length to fix that issue. That looks good to me. So we have the polygon shape. We have the ellipse with the animation, increasing the ellipse and decreasing it. Then you have the laser line, and you can also go to the merge node because this is in the front and change the apply mode if you want to 
have something else visible or maybe just adjust the blend mode so it's not as visible but for the last step we need to make some sparks and to do that we'll use particle emitter so we need that and I will also use the particle directional force display this on the left I probably won't see anything and that's because I also need to render the particles display them on the left side and maybe what I can do is simply use a merge node so this will be automatically made into 2D composition so I will see it in the 2D space now in the particle emitter what I will do is change the size so we can change the size as you can see I will also change the number from 10 to maybe 5 and the style this will not be point I will use a blob maybe and I want to adjust the size to be bigger so I can actually see it at the moment I just want to see how the particles look like so they are dropping down why is that? well that is because of the particle directional force we can adjust the strength we do need them to fall down so that is ok you can adjust how fast they will fall now in the particle emitter what we need to change firstly is to add some velocity but because if this sparks flying because of welding we have to change the angle so we'll set the angle to 90 this will make the particles fly up but then the particle directional force will force them to fall down and we just have to balance these two values so the velocity and the particle directional force but also we want some angle variance so they're not just going up and then falling directly down we want to split them a little bit so let's remove the directional force for now so we can see how far they scatter so we have the particles forming in this circle and moving up and once we add directional force they will fall down so this is how that can look like maybe adjust the velocity a little bit and set the strength to default see how that looks like I think this looks good so now we can go to style and change the initial size also set the size variance if you want size to velocity and we can also change the size over life now what I have done is I have added some blur and I've added directional blur and I've added radial but what I have done is I've used an ellipse as a mask so we can see the particles inside but to see them we'll simply click invert so now we'll see the particles that are in the making maybe adjust the soft edge by a tiny bit and once they leave the ellipse we'll see the particles as lines currently we don't see them as maybe we want it so increase back the size over life and size to velocity and we also have the fade controls if you want to fade something in or out as for size maybe let's go with one see how that looks like we can also change the color of the particles since we have everything bluish and purplish I'll just go with the blue one and we can also change the color over life so we can add a bunch of colors and change them to what we want I think this looks good what I'll do now is I will simply copy the soft glow and the glow connect them in again I will now merge this and the last thing that I'm missing is another transfer node to connect the particles to this ellipse so I will again go to the center path modifiers right click connect to and this can be let's see well actually what I could do is not do the path 
so I can delete this but simply find the ellipse so how am I moving the ellipse? the ellipse I am moving it with the transform on and I can connect the transform 3 to the transform 1 center x and y values how can I do that? I can pin the transform 1 node go to the transform 3 so I didn't connect the right one I have to go to the transform 3 right click in the transform 3 expression and connect this one to transform 1 so this is linked to the ellipse. So now we have everything that is following nicely. Now the particles don't look as nice as I would want them to. The first thing that we have to do is position the particles so that they are behind the line and the ellipse. So I'll position this merge node here and this one here. Is that good enough? Not good enough yet. So I have to switch these two inputs, so the node selected, Control T, and now everything is behind, so that's nice, and this line is also behind the particles. That's cool, now we just have to make the particles look nice. So I think we have too many of them, I will drop the number of particles to two, the velocity I think is okay, what about the style, maybe... I want to change it. So it's best if you leave this to white, if you have color over life enabled. So this actually takes the form of all of the colors that you specified. I'll maybe adjust the initial size back to 0.5. Now the last thing that we need to do is animate the particle directional force, otherwise this doesn't make much sense. So when we're going in this direction, maybe you want the particles to go this way and then you will simply adjust the direction to how you want it to go and also let's adjust the lifespan so I had this set to 60 and the virion set to 30 and I have to go to the style and change this color and simply lower the alpha so you don't get the black color. Now if you don't like the direction of the laser, you can simply go to the transfer node. This one is not connected to anything, but you can simply adjust the position of it and the laser will move from a different direction. And in this case, as you can see the laser coming from this point, it will be ideal to position the particle directional force to this direction. So do you want to see the end result? I do. Let's see it. Maybe it will be a bit slow because this is real life preview. There was a bit of a hiccup with the animation of the line. I would have to fix that. Otherwise it's looking fairly decent. The only thing that's missing is some sounds. Now that's it for this video. If you found it helpful and would like to see more DaVinci Resolve content, subscribe to the channel. I'm Simon and until next time Jackal, keep it digital.